Next, we're going to step into income and earnings reports. An income statement shows the transactions that occur during a specified period of time, a fiscal period, and are summarized typically on a one-month period or a quarterly period. This mirrors the organization's formal budget document in total uh, as far as a year-end document. So let's look at our example again with Natalie's Quilting Corner. If we look at the overall statement for February 2017, we can show a total revenue of $11,270 $11, and a total expenditure of $9,950. So at the bottom, we have the net revenue uh, of $1,320, which means it's a profit. The loss that you see in parenthesis, what, will, what would usually happen is if there is a total loss for the month, that, that $1,320 would be in parenthesis um, to show that it's a negative. The balance sheet for the end of the reporting period, whether that's monthly or quarterly, may have different asset, liability, and equity amounts. This is simply because these amounts will include expected receivables and payables for the period immediately after the report preparation date. So it could, like again, it could be looking into the future just a short period of time because of things we expect to happen. Retaining Retained Earnings Report. They show the profit that can stay with the company and adds to the owner's equity total. So things we're getting in and keeping long term. One of the four primary financial statements that publicly traded corporations must publish quarterly and annually is the Retained Earnings Report. So let's look at an example. And here we have Patriots Village Amusement Park. So the net income for fiscal year 2020 was $1.7 million and some change. The dividends uh, declared and paid for 2020 is $800,000. Um, so that's things that went out, right? And we have a retained earnings for the 31st of December 2020 of $956,890. So overall, our retained earnings is almost $1 million. Let's look at internal control operations. This is when professional staff control financial operations, accounting, and reporting. So this will usually include things like bookkeepers and accountants, and their function is to record transactions and the pay bills. Additional functions include recording transactions, paying bills, but also depositing funds, maintaining certain accounts or all accounts, and then administering petty cash funds or, the, or, or a petty cash fund for the organization. Let's talk about the petty cash fund for just a second. So most expenses are paid by a check or credit card, but sometimes it's impossible or just inefficient to draw a check to make a payment. So example, this might be street parking, postage stamps, and other small inventory, non-inventory items that are purchased. Guidelines should be developed relating to what and how what can be spent relating to the petty cash fund. Then we need to think about things like how we deal with a voucher, receipts, uh, who submits what, so the petty cash fund must always total the original amount of funds. So we got remaining funds that left in the drawer or the account plus any vouchers where that money was spent. So typically we limit the petty cash fund to 50 or $100. So here's an example of a petty cash reconciliation statement or a voucher. As you can see, we've got a date, open, the open uh, cash on hand. Um, any payments we've made to the petty cash, mint, cash fund and then subtract any vouchers that were paid out of it. So there you go. That concludes our financial status reports, incomes, and earnings statements.